we had an inquiry from the Soviet Union out of a clear blue just before the real Cold War started, but there was already separations. <laughs> and I remember the first thing we knew about it, we had a call from State Department asking, uh, we've got a request for two Russians for visas to come over to see you. Do you have any objections? <laughs> Not if they want to spend their money here. <laughs> and so on. Do you have any uh, government contracts in your plant? It says, no. Nope. In fact, it was all strictly commercial. Finally, these two fellows show up. Well, one was KGB. The other guy was a good engineer. And the KGB spoke English, and he was, quote, his translator. And I told Ann, says, well, let's invite him to the house, and you take care of that guy, and I'll talk to this guy. In the meantime, I had received from the CIA asking a whole bunch of questions about Russian railway stuff. The the tone of the questions was that whoever wrote the questions had no clue of what happens on railroads. A basic question they ask is, what happens to air conditioning in the winter time? Answer, it's not used. <laughs> and the FBI was calling three times a day, wanted to know what they were doing and who they were seeing and what did they eat for lunch and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it passed off fine, and these chaps went home. And, of course, we had sold the equipment. And I mean, I mean hell, there's, there's nothing secret about me. I mean, I had secret clearances, for heaven's sakes, in the Navy. And I've had them since. When I was with uh, Minor in this international business, uh, Eisenhower was still the president, and he started a group called the, you know, the initials were NDER, National Defense Executive Reserve. It was a group of people from industry at the, say, vice presidential levels. Um, we met various departments, commerce, agriculture, defense, of course, they all had their departments. And what they did is they recruited a bunch of people such as myself, and that was under the Commerce Department. We had training meetings twice a year in secluded places. We actually practiced uh, scenarios. What happens if an atom bomb is dropped here and the fallout goes this way? Uh, what is the amount of destruction? How do we get back on our feet? Hey, Gagarin, what will the railroads need? How are you going to run this thing? My job, and I have orders, written orders, was to go to, in the event of an atomic bomb hitting around here, if I could move fast enough, to go down to a bunker uh, in Olney, about what, 10 miles from here north, and that bunker still exists there. And uh, there uh, I was to coordinate what transportation could be handled, how it could be handled. Uh, eventually, this group was disbanded under Clinton. And when Clinton came along, he disbanded it and he upgraded FEMA. And FEMA's been learning their lesson now after having gone through a bunch of disasters. It was sort of an interesting activity. And of course, the owners of the companies I was with realized what I was doing. And they were perfectly OK with them for me to do it. They did not know when, what, or how I was doing it. And Eisenhower had the idea to establish this from from World War II time when they had the so-called dollar a year men, when they had the big industrialists tap into the government to run certain things the way businesses should be run. 
uh, to some extent, there might have been. One, one example would have, was the, which was already too late because it was already in existence. But we pointed out the ridiculousness of the interstate highway, for instance, crossing the New Haven Railroad between New York and New Haven seven times. So seven well-placed bombs, or not even seven, but two or three, would cut out complete rail and land transportation between the northeast vital place. You know, that kind of stuff. 